What's up, guys? Midnight Stories 32 here. I have a wild murder mystery that has so many twists and turns that you're going to be nauseous by the end of it. It all starts with an affluent family located in Durham, North Carolina. Michael Peterson was a writer and found pleasure in writing novels after his career abruptly ended in the military from an injury. Kathleen Peterson was a well-accomplished woman that was the director of information for a firm called Nortel Networks. It was a cool winter night on December 9th, 2001, when Michael and Kathleen finished watching American Sweethearts around 11 p.m. Feeling good buzzed and well energized from polishing off a bottle of wine, the happy couple decided to open their second bottle and go enjoy the 60 degree weather on their pool deck outside of their North Carolina mansion. After about two hours of enjoying each other's company, Kathleen decided it was time to go inside so she can get some sleep. She needed to be well rested for her meetings early in the morning. Michael thought the weather was too nice to pass up, so he stayed outside for another hour puffing on his tobacco pipe. Around 2.40 a.m., Michael came inside and noticed his wife was laying at the bottom of the stairs next to a pool of blood. Michael, frantically trying to process what had happened, immediately called 911. Once the operator answered the phone, Michael had hysterically asked them to send help as his wife had fallen down the stairs. The police quickly arrived and noticed that the scene didn't look consistent with the 911 report. There appeared to be too much blood around Kathleen and her body was positioned in a way that typically wouldn't occur when falling downstairs. There was one more thing. The blood was dry by the time the police arrived. The police immediately made up their mind that this was no accident. Michael Peterson had murdered his wife. Mike quickly lawyered up and got a team of his own forensic scientists. After reviewing the evidence the state brought against Michael, his team of forensic scientists quickly saw that while the lacerations on the back of Kathleen's head were intense, it did not resemble someone attacked from a crime of passion. In addition to that, the blood splatter pattern could have been a result of a fall. Given the evidence presented from the initial scene, what do you think? Did Kathleen have too much to drink and just fall down the stairs? Or did Mike attack her from a fit of rage? Stick around till the end so you can see the wild twists and turns of this story. Mike's legal team went to work and began getting evidence from the home to corroborate Mike's statement. They also interviewed all of Kathleen and Mike's friends and family to find out the public perception of their relationship. Everyone said that Mike and Kathleen had the perfect marriage. They never argue and collectively earned a lot of money. They were considered the power couple. Just because they were happily married doesn't mean that Mike couldn't have gotten angry with his wife about something. Maybe the tensions got hot and the alcohol acted like a catalyst. Maybe just for a second, Mike slipped. Right? Wrong. There wasn't one person in Mike's life that could say something negative about him. There wasn't even one time a friend or family member heard Mike's ra raise his voice. Unfortunately for Mike, the police also conducted their own investigation. What they uncovered was critical to the case. This is where things get really sketch. The police searched Mike's personal computer and found his secret life. Mike was attracted to both men and women. He was enrolled to a hookup website where men could anonymously meet other men. Lastly, Mike was also stationed in Germany in 1985. He also had a friend named Elizabeth Ratliff, who had fallen down the stairs and died a day after the two were at dinner. I don't know, guys. Does lightning strike twice in the same place? Does Mike cheating on his wife cause enough motive for murder? Let me know down in the comments. The prosecutors argued that Kathleen had found out that Mike was attracted to men and this caused a rift in their marriage. Mike knew that he had a $1.5 million insurance policy on Kathleen and began to plan the murder of his wife before she could tell anyone. Fast forward to October 10th, 2003 and the trial finally came to a close. The jury found Michael Peterson guilty. In a normal story, things would end right here. Unfortunately for everyone involved in this case, closure wouldn't happen for another 14 years. 
Michael appealed his ruling and maintained his innocence. After further investigation, the Peterson defense found that one of the juries made their decision solely based off the prosecution's key witness's ethnicity. This allowed Michael to fight for a retrial. In February of 2017, Mike agreed to an Alford plea, which is when a defendant knows that there's enough evidence to convict them, so they agree to plead guilty while maintaining their innocence. In return, the state agreed to drop the charges to manslaughter and only give Michael 86 months in prison. What do you think? Should the state have lowered the charges to manslaughter? If you like this video and are interested in learning more about true stories, please subscribe. Until next time, Midnight Stories 32.